Greetings, beloved, and welcome to Narugate Channel. Another beautiful day our Father God has made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I welcome those who just joined Narugate Channel. Let us learn together its operation. Give Jesus your 100%. In 2024, beloved, I'm wrapping up all the messages that our Father has given me. And it's my last year on YouTube. Our Father is done, beloved. We serve a powerful God, the great I am, the one and only risen king, the only wise God. In him I hid all the treasures of knowledge and wisdom. Hallelujah. We continue, beloved. I am definitely wrapping up. Praise the name of the Lord. I am just gleaning the scriptures. Some of the messages that I did not share. Today, I'm going to cover the book of Philemon, the shortest epistle that Paul wrote. It's a beautiful story of salvation, forgiveness, confession, restitution, and just how to live generally as a child of God. This short epistle is loaded, beloved. We can learn a lot as children of God. Those who are in positions of leadership, the masters, the servants, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I will read the entire epistle. It is not that long. Then we will unpack it. Praise the name of the Lord. It is the story of a man called Philemon who had a church in his house. And from the scriptures, we can tell that he had a close relationship with Apostle Paul. And he had a servant called Onesimus who left him to go to Rome. And while he was in Rome, he repented. And Paul sent him back. But there is a lot to learn from this epistle. Praise the name of the Lord. It's like Paul summarized most of his epistles in just this one. So I will read from verse 1. The word of God says, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer, and to our beloved Apaphia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers, hearing of thy love and faith, which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. For we have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. Verse 8. Wherefore, though I might be much bold in Christ to enjoin thee that which is convenient, yet for love's sake I rather beseech thee, being such and one as Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bones, which in time past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me. Verse 12, whom I have sent again, thou therefore receive him, that is my own bowels whom I will have retained with me, that in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in the bones of the gospel. But without thy mind will I do nothing, that thy benefit should not be as it were of necessity, but willingly. Verse 15. 
For perhaps he therefore departed for a reason, that thou shouldest receive him forever, not now as a servant, but above a servant, a brother beloved, specially to me, but how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord? If thou count me therefore a partner, receive him as myself. If he hath wronged thee or owed thee aught, put that in mine account. I, Paul, have written it with mine own hand. I will repay it, albeit I do not say to thee how much thou owest unto me, even thine own self beside. Yea, therefore, let me have joy in thee in the Lord. Refresh my bowels in the Lord. Having confidence in thy obedience, I wrote unto thee, knowing that thou wilt also do more than I say. But without prepare me also a lodging, for I trust that through your prayers I shall be given unto you. There salute thee, Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, Marcus, Aristarchus, Demas, Lucas, my fellow laborers. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. That is the powerful word of God, beloved. Paul wrote this epistle while he was in Rome to Philemon. And like I said earlier, we can see through scriptures that they were close to each other. In verse 1, he called him a fellow laborer. And in verse 17, he called him a partner. In verse 22, he said that Philemon must prepare a guest house for him. And he said through their prayers, he believed that he will be joining them soon. So we can see that Philemon and Apostle Paul had a close relationship. And Philemon had a church in his house. That is what verse 2 says. So like I said in the beginning, there is a lot to learn in this short epistle of Paul to Philemon. So the story is about Onesimus. Onesimus was a servant of Philemon. So for some reason, he left his master, Philemon. And he went to Rome. And while he was in Rome, he repented. He received salvation. He gave his life unto the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And Paul wrote a letter to his master, Philemon, asking him to receive Onesimus back. And I love what he said in verse 8. I will read it. He said, Wherefore, Though I might be much bold in Christ to enjoin thee that which is convenient, yet for love's sake I rather beseech thee, being such an one as Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Powerful word of God, beloved. Paul said to Philemon, I have enough confidence in Christ. I have that boldness in Christ to order you to do what I want you to do. I have that authority in the Lord. But yet, for love's sake, rather I'm appealing unto you. So we see Paul is teaching us something here as children of God. Like I said, beloved, there is a lot to learn in this epistle. Paul was an elder to Philemon. So as an elder, he had all the right or the boldness in Christ to tell him 
that this is what I want you to do. But he said, yet for love's sake. Because he taught us about love. In his first epistle to the church in Corinth, in chapter 13, in the book of Colossians chapter 3, Romans chapter 8, Paul spoke of brotherly love. Praise the name of the Lord. So we see him exercising love rather than authority to his fellow brother in the Lord, Philemon. Regardless of his position as an elder to him, yet he said, for love's sake, I am pleading with you. For love's sake. He said, since I am poor, the old man, and a prisoner of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, suffering for the gospel. So we see there, beloved, Paul exercising love to his fellow brethren in the Lord. He said, I am not exercising the boldness that I have in Christ. Yes, I can. I can command you. I can order you. But rather, for love's sake, I am appealing to you. So we have a lot to learn as children of God. And those who are in leadership in the house of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So Paul said to Philemon that receive Onesimus. He said, not as a servant, but receive him as a brother in the Lord. Yes, he was your servant before, but now he is a different person. We don't know why Onesimus left, but from the scripture, the word of God says that Onesimus was not useful to Philemon at some point. And I will read verse 11. Paul said, which in time past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me. So we do not know what is it that Onesimus did to his master to make him unprofitable to a point where he left to go to Rome. But Paul is saying that now he is profitable to you and to me. He is a fellow brethren in the Lord. And Paul went ahead, he said, whatever he is owing, put it to my account. And I want us to pay attention here, beloved. Paul is teaching us something very important. He's teaching us restitution that when you come to the Lord, when you repent, it's not the end of it. It's the beginning of the journey. So since we do not know why Onesimus left his master to go to Rome, where he received repentance, Paul even said that perhaps it was for the best that he left his master that time so that he will return forever. And when he returns, he returns as a brother. He has now changed. Let us remember Paul's second epistle to the church in Corinth in chapter 5, verse 17 to 18. I will read it. The word of God says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things 
are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Praise the name of the Lord. We see Paul exercising what he wrote in his second epistle to the church in Corinth in chapter 5. Onesimus is now a new creature. All things have passed away. Praise the name of the Lord. As we are reconciled back to God through Jesus, we see that Paul is reconciling Onesimus and his master together back again. Praise the name of the Lord. So it looks like he did not live in good faith because Paul is sending him back to his master. And he said, whatever that he owes, if he owes you, I will pay it back. All of it. So we get to learn restitution that once you are a new creature in the Lord, you have to fix the wrongs that you have done. Praise the name of the Lord. You just do not carry on with your journey and say that all things have passed away. Yes, they have, but the wrongs must be fixed. Paul said that, I will pay it all back to you because it's what is expected. If you have taken something that does not belong to you, you have to make it right to the owner. Praise the name of the Lord. Again, Paul said that he would have loved to retain Onesimus. But he wouldn't be doing the right thing. He has to do the right thing and send him back. Onesimus has to go back to his master. Because remember, there are scriptures of how servants should behave before their masters. How the servants are supposed to do things. And I am going to read it. I will read Colossians chapter 3, verse 22 to 23. This was Paul. He said, Servants, obey in all things your masters according to flesh. I have highlighted there according to flesh. So that we understand that the master there is not referring to our Lord. He continued, he said, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily, as to the Lord, and not unto men. Again, Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 18, Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear. Not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. Again, Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 5, Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to flesh. Again, I have highlighted according to the flesh. With fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart, as unto Christ. That is the responsibility of a servant to his master, according to flesh. We must do it wholeheartedly, not with eye service, knowing that as you are doing that, you are serving God. Praise the name of the Lord. So Paul said in verse 11 of the book of Philemon that Onesimus was unprofitable to his master. Meaning that he was not following all these responsibilities. 
And we do understand because he was not born again at that time. So now he is a new creature in the Lord. He is born again. That's why Paul said, receive him not as a servant, but as a fellow brethren. Meaning that even though he will be a servant, this time he will obey the scriptures. He will know that serving his master is as good as serving the Lord. As Paul and Peter said in those scriptures that I just read. That's why I said that this epistle is a summary of many other epistles that Paul wrote. Praise the name of the Lord. So we can see that Onesimus, before grace, he was an unprofitable servant to his master Philemon. But now Paul is reconciling them back to one another, telling Philemon that you are not receiving the same man as he was before. Yes, physically he is the same, but spiritually he's a new creature. All things have passed away. So if Onesimus was running away from his master because he stole from him, now he met the Lord. And Apostle Paul is sending him back to do the right thing. And he said that even though I would have loved to keep him, I cannot because he still belongs to you. I am sending you back. However, we see the good. The Bible says that all things work together for good for those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. So his going away helped him to find the Lord. And now he's going to be profitable to his master, Philemon. Because Philemon had a church in his house. Again, beloved, we see the story of forgiveness and love. Because now Philemon has to forgive Onesimus. Paul even reminded Philemon that even you yourself, you do owe me. I do not know what is it that Philemon owes Paul. But we know that they were close. So he is reminding him that you ought to forgive him and receive him as a brother. In verse 21, Paul said, I wrote this letter because I have confidence in your obedience, knowing that you will not only do this, you will even do more. Praise the name of the Lord. Because like I said, these two were close. That's why Paul said that he has confidence in his obedience. Because he knew that Philemon had the fear of God in him. And he had confidence that he will do as he asked him. Praise the name of the Lord. Remember, in verse 1, he said that Philemon is his fellow laborer in the Lord. He had a church in his own house. So, beloved, like I said, there is a lot to learn in this epistle. So, we read how Paul handled this whole reconciliation between Onesimus and his master. He said that he had the boldness, the authority in Christ to tell brother Philemon what to do, but rather 
for love's sake, he appealed to him. So he chose love instead of authority. As he has taught us about love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, in the book of Colossians chapter 3, and in the book of Ephesians. So we see him practically exercising that love toward his fellow brethren in the Lord. Though he was an elder to him, because Philemon had the gospel from Apostle Paul. Again, beloved, we learn that it doesn't matter the circumstances that we are in. We continue to share the gospel. I believe Paul was in prison the time he wrote this letter in Rome. But yet he continued to be faithful in God. Again, Onesimus, on his way, running away from his master, he met the Lord. And we learn there, beloved, confession and restitution. Paul is teaching us that even if you were running away. Once you receive salvation, you have to do things right. So I believe Onesimus confessed to Paul his wrong deeds. So Paul said to him, I'm sending you back to your master because that is where you belong. Even though you were unprofitable to him, but now you will be profitable because you are a new creature now in the Lord. Paul reconciled him back to his master because now Onesimus was going to live according to the scriptures. So we see a beautiful story of love. Paul called him his own son. He said to Philemon, receive him as if you are receiving me because this is my son. Powerful, beloved. Again, we learn, beloved, that as brethren in the Lord, we are equal before the Lord. Paul said, receive him not as a servant, but as a fellow brethren. Because now we are in the same faith. Praise the name of the Lord. And again, Paul is reiterating to us the importance of restitution. So he understood that Onesimus might not be in a position to pay back what he might have taken from his master. But he is taking it upon himself to pay back so that Satan will not be accusing him before God. So we get to understand that it is important to fix the wrongs that we have done and to pay back what we took that did not belong to us. Praise the name of the Lord. And to Philemon, he expected him to obey. Paul said, I am writing this because I have confidence in your obedience. He believed that Philemon is going to do everything that he has asked him. And he said, not only that, I believe that you are going to do more. And he's teaching us 
as believers, integrity, how to live, how to handle things. He said, I would have loved to keep Onesimus for myself, but I know it will not be the right thing. Therefore, I am sending him back to you where he belongs. He belongs to you. But now he is coming back as a new man. So, beloved, this is a beautiful epistle to us. It's teaching us brotherly love, forgiveness, confession, restitution, preaching the gospel irrespective of the circumstances. It's teaching us faith and hope in the Lord because Paul said he believed that through the prayers of the believers, he will be released and he will go and join them. So he said to them, they must prepare a lodging for him. That is faith. Praise the name of the Lord. It is beautiful. It has blessed me. And I hope it will bless you too. I will end it here, beloved. I love you all. Stay blessed as we continue to learn. Bye-bye.